philosophers sometimes distinguish between uh, different different problems of evil. So the problem of evil, um, how is it that the existence of all of this suffering we find ourselves confronted with is compatible with the existence of a, an, an all good, all powerful, all knowing God? Uh, if God is all good, wouldn't he uh, want to prevent uh, uh, so much of this horrific suffering? And if he's all powerful and all knowing, wouldn't he have the power and know how to do so? And so why do we find ourselves confronted with all of this suffering. Now, <clears throat> this is a kind of theoretical problem, um, but it's also, th there's also an existential problem that we face when we encounter terrible evil in, in our own lives and in the lives of others. It can induce a kind of vertigo, vertigo. It can make it very difficult to believe that, that there is a God of, of the kind described by traditional Christianity. Um, and so you, you've done some really interesting thinking and writing about this, um, this, this existential problem of evil um, as it's treated in the writings of uh, Fyodor uh, Dostoevsky uh, and, and um, his um, beautiful character, Father Zosima. And so I wonder if you could tell us a bit about how you think about the practical problem of evil uh, and what you think uh, Dostoevsky's um, uh, solution or reply to this problem is, and and then whether you think it works, whether you whether you find it persuasive. Yeah, the uh, the practical problem is sometimes we we find ourselves quite rightly um, feeling a revulsion against certain kinds of really horrific evil um, that uh, certainly others in the world experience, and maybe we ourselves have been touched by um, at some point in our lives. Uh, and it induces in us a profound sense of that this, things ought not to be this way, and we don't want to align ourselves with any grand scheme of things such that um, uh, this is, is uh, a part of what's being planned. But of course, as theists, the problem is God has permitted the, uh, a world uh, uh, for us to exist in a world where precisely such horrible things have happened, and so then, the, for some individuals, when they experience this kind of, uh, of of intense suffering, they find themselves just psychologically withdrawing from God. Um, uh, it's it, and it, it's as because perhaps out of an identification with the sufferer, they, they feel they don't want to simply say uh, that, well, God is wholly just and God is perfectly good, and He will bring good out of horrific evil, they, they, they worry that this seems to um, say that they should not properly grieve uh, the suffering that, uh, that human individuals experience. And many, many religious individuals sometimes report um, not so much theoretically ceasing to believe that God exists when they encounter evil, but just fe God feeling distant and, the, and feeling the inability to draw near to God and to, to love God, to trust God, um, given his willing per, um, permission of these kinds of suffering. And that's the, the way that Dostoevsky frames the problem of evil in The Brothers Karamazov, which I think is just a, a terrific novel in, in many ways. You have three sons of, of, uh, that um, are all interesting characters, but one of them goes off, it's set in Russia, of course, uh, one of them is, uh, goes off and is educated in the West and becomes a sort of enlightenment uh, atheist type figure, and he, uh, he, th he frames the problem of evil this way. He's, you know, he says, I don't want to, even if it's true that God will bring great good and cause uh, an uh, ultimate harmony of all things uh, in the, the eschaton, I don't want to participate in that. I, you know, and I, 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 I want to declare now, I, I want to have no part of that. And it seems to be a kind of moral righteousness stand of saying, uh, you know, maybe God could cause me to acquiesce in it, but I don't want God to do that. Don't, I don't want him to change my mind about this. I, I want to just stand apart and stand with the suffering victim. He puts so, it in terms of the suffering of a, of a young child and says, yes. if, if all of this requires the torture of this one innocent child, then I don't want a part of it. Yes, exactly. And uh, so then there's this other character that, um, and Dostoevsky very much wrote, uh, he wrote it um, in, in stages. It, it was published in serial form, as many 19th century novels were. And we have some of his correspondence. Um, and 
he, he very much wanted the, the novel to, to offer a response to the problem of evil, and he feared that he did a better job of framing the problem of evil uh, than, than he did in, in giving a powerful Christian response to it. And, and in fact, in, as, as you know, in uh, a lot of anthologies devoted to the problem of evil, you often get an excerpt of just the, uh, Ivan, the, the, the brother of the atheist, his statement of the problem of evil. And it's, it's very painful to read, his recounting of just some horrific atrocities. Um, that occurred uh, in and around that time. Uh, so, but, th but this character, Father uh, Zosima, is a sort of, he's, we're, we're introduced to him as the saintly monk that people come to and they just feel spiritual comfort, often just in his presence, even when he doesn't speak. Uh, he's this, 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 this powerful saintly figure. He's a person of overwhelming love. I mean, that's yes. the thing that most strikes you about him. Right. So, uh, a, really a model of, of, of Christian virtue, uh, a very Christ-like figure. Uh, but uh, he, at one point, he recounts the story of his life and, he, and he, he indicates that actually, early on, he was a violently angry um, young man and uh, participated in dueling. Uh, and such, and uh, over the course of his life, he, he embraced the Christian faith and was slowly transformed. And all the, uh, he functions, I, I, I think, in Dostoevsky's hands as a kind of witness to, because he, 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 he encounters people, people come to him who are suffering horribly. So he, he's not sheltered from, he, he's aware of the intense suffering of many individuals. And he just speaks with great confidence that it is possible to be reconciled to that uh, without diminishing it and, and while still identifying with the victim of suffering. And, and he doesn't tell us how. He just says it is possible to come to see things in this way. So he's, he's, he, he, I, I take it what Dostoevsky is doing, he's saying he's a kind of witness. If you get to a point of spiritual development that an individual like Father Zosima um, has, it's possible to have an integration of your deep, profoundest moral convictions about the, the wrongness of horrific suffering and complete trust in the deep love of God. Uh, and so he, and, and, and we're supposed to, the, uh, what we, the reader, are, are invited to take away is listen to the testimony of some individuals like that. Uh, it's true there aren't that many of us that attain that level of saintliness in, in, our, in our lives, but there are some, and we should, we should listen to them because these are far from being individuals who are morally calloused. They're not dismissive of suffering. These, these are, they're, they're, they have great sensitivity to suffering, and yet they also have profound intimacy with God. And um, they, they can experience it as a moral committedness and um, trust in the love of God. So, so I, I just think it, 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 Dostoevsky's solution is there are certain saints that are witnesses to us that it is possible so, to reconcile that. And, and then it's an invitation for us to try to follow that path and to experience that for ourselves. So is, is it that <clears throat> you, you can imagine someone in the, in the grip of uh, an existential crisis, uh, pulling, finding themselves repulsed maybe by God uh, uh, because of horrific suffering they've experienced or witnessed. And, is, and it, you can imagine trying to come in and give the person an argument, you know, a philosophical argument, yes. which maybe uh, in some cases might help, but in many cases maybe would feel cold and lifeless and uh, um, unduly abstract. And is, is Dostoevsky in effect saying, I'm not going to give you an argument. I'm going to give you a picture. This is, this is what it looks like to be um, full of love, wholly trusting in God and his goodness, wholly in solidarity with the suffering. This is what it looks like it can be done. Um, uh, contemplate this and it, it will bring healing to you. I mean, is this in effect the, the Yes, thought? I think that's it. Um, I, I, I I think he should perhaps add um, what he no doubt believes uh, that some human individuals in this life may have experienced such profound suffering. Say, seeing the, uh, he, he recounts a story of a, a mother seeing her, uh, her child being deliberately killed savagely right before her eyes. 
if, you know, that sort of the people who experience wartime atrocities uh, can become so psychologically damaged, it may be impossible, uh, absent a miraculous divine intervention in this life, for those individuals to experience the kind of peace and wholeness that a character like Father Zosima um, experiences. Um, and, uh, and I think we just have to recognize that. Um, it, th these individuals may be um, rendered naturally incapable of, of any psychological wholeness, wellness in this life. But um, God is capable of, you know, uh, Jesus is the great physician, and uh, we are promised that um, individuals who cling to God will, even if they're not capable of experience that, 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 that wholeness, that overcoming of deep woundedness, uh, God can bring that about. And it's, it's hard to imagine sometimes how that could be, but um, I think as Christians, we also have to bear in mind um, that the God we worship is a God who suffered greatly on our behalf. And um, uh, a contemporary philosopher, Marilyn Adams, has interestingly um, speculated that one way in which people who've experienced horrific suffering might actually come to, in a way, have, have that suffering take on redemptive value for them, even though it remains an evil thing, what they experienced, but it can't come to have redemptive uh, significance if God enables them in a kind of mystical way to yoke their suffering, see their suffering as a means of identification with the suffering of Christ on our behalf, right? The, the inner life of God who grieves um, over, over his uh, suffering and sinful children and, and longs to have them return to them and, and experience profound suffering and alienation in, in, in um, the second person of the Trinity and incarnated and crucified. Um, that could be, uh, for, for, for some individuals in this life, they might say, well, I, you know, I can't make that identification. It still it doesn't help me to, but God could cause them to have insight into the character of God that it could somehow take on redemptive significance for them. And I, I find that a, a helpful suggestion as just, just a, a possible intimation of a way that that, that, that could be done. Um, and no doubt it, w it requires supernatural activity on the part of God, but we, we're already, we're already committed. committed to that, yeah.